It's the Orioles on Masson and the O's mighty happy to be back home where there'll be a big crowd on hand for the first meeting of the year between the Rangers and the Orioles who last met in the wild card game last year in Texas, won, of course, by the Orioles. Welcome, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne for the Orioles. They come back home after a road trip where they went two and four. The bats went quiet as the Orioles just could not score runs. 2.7 a game. They hope those bats will come alive here, especially that of Chris Davis. Davis, of course, leading the major league in home runs. And as far as he's concerned, he is chasing the all-time single-season home run mark. This is what Chris Davis had to say in New York regarding that chase. He was talking about Roger Maris. He was the last guy to do it clean. There are a lot of things that have been said about the guys who have come after him and have achieved the record. But I think as far as the fans are concerned, they still view Maris as being the all-time home run record holder. Chris Davis has been questioned because of the home runs. Are you on anything? Oh, well... He says, no. He says, so long as I keep doing the things that I'm doing, then I'm going to be okay. He's not on, he says, steroids, not on any kind of performance enhancing drugs. So as far as he's concerned, it's about Maris. He said, just like everybody else, we have the strictest drug testing policy. That he spoke to in New York for the first time. If you take a look at the home run records, here's what it looks like. You have at the top of the list the guys who have been affiliated with performance-enhancing drugs. Bonds, McGuire, Sosa, McGuire, Sosa, Sosa. As far as Chris Davis is concerned, it's 1961. It's Roger Maris. It's 61 home runs. That's the legitimate home run mark for the regular season. He's on pace for 60 right now. Mike Bordick, it is interesting that that is the view being taken by Chris Davis. Well, it is, but I I think a lot of players take Chris Davis's view today. Unfortunately, a whole decade of baseball was tarnished because of the use of performance-enhancing drugs, and today's players are being scrutinized for it. Listen, there are still players that try to get away with it, but they're getting caught. That drug testing program that's in place right now is very aggressive. They test for all PEDs, HGH and steroids. Listen, Chris Davis has hit home runs since 2006 when he was signed. He is a legitimate power hitter. This guy trains hard. He's a committed athlete. He has a great head on his shoulders, and he is the best power hitter in the game today. I think it makes it really interesting. I mean, for the fans are going to have to decide this on your own. Is Chris Davis, in fact, chasing the single season home run mark? As far as he's concerned, he is, and he's on a pace where he could hit 60 or more and maybe best Roger Maris. I, I mean, other than saying that, you have those other names that are on top, but I guess what Chris Davis is doing is setting up a chance where the fans are going to have to make decisions about that. Yeah, and they're definitely going to make comparisons between him and Maris. I mean, he's putting up record numbers right now, and there's just no, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any let up. He's going into the All Star game as the best power hitter in the game. He's chasing Miguel Cabrera, obviously, for the Triple Crown. I mean, incredible numbers, and Chris Davis is on pace to break the record. Well, let's see if he can add to it here tonight. This is a big four game series against this Texas team, two ball clubs who are trying to get to the top of their respective divisions.
Baseball on Masson is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Back here at Camden Yard, it's a beautiful evening uh, as the humidity and the temperatures have dropped a little bit. We're down to 88 degrees, our train game time temperature. Train is celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Well, Texas comes in with their bats quiet with a lineup, though, that's always had thump. Kensler, Murphy, and Cruz, Beltre, Pruszynski, and Moreland. Andrus, Angel Beltre, who's playing in center field, and Leonez Martin. You see this season four Beltre big all-star numbers. Yeah, let's take a look at the scouting report for Scott Feldman tonight. Welcome home after being acquired by way of a trade last week. This will be Scott's first start at Camden Yards in an Oriole uniform. Of course, he pitched with Texas a while back, and he had great numbers here at Camden Yards going 3-0 with a 2.55. Familiar foe, spent eight seasons with the Rangers, so he's familiar with a lot of the Rangers hitters. Might have an advantage there. Features a consistent mix of a single fastball good two seamer getting a lot more ground balls this year cutter and a big curveball there's the numbers on the year for Feldman 16 start seven and six record with a 3.43 earned run average 73 strikeouts on the year opponent average at 235 lefties hitting just 224 righties a quick better at 245 and of course he goes against a lot of players whom he knows very well having pitched for the course of eight seasons at different times. The right-hander debuted with the Texas team in 2005. Ron Washington, the skipper of the ball club, who's 51 and 37 mark, leaves them a half game out of first place in the West. The Orioles are 49 and 40. They are now tied for second place with Tampa Bay in the American League East, chasing the Red Sox. But Showalter's team gets back home where they're 25 and 17 on the year. And we are ready to go. Four games set, and it ought to be interesting. First meeting of these teams this year. And Kinsler, who's got a six game hit streak, will lead it off in the leadoff spot. And Kinsler will take the pitch and will do so for a strike. Yeah, pretty interesting numbers against Texas last year. Texas with a stronghold against the Orioles with 10 victories actually over the last two years. But of course, the Orioles with the big win. That one's a little squibber to second base. Casilla right there, and there's an out on two pitches. Let's take a look at the Orioles' defense behind Feldman tonight. McLeod, Jones, and Mark Kakis in the outfield. All-star shortstop J.J. Hardy. Casilla making the start at second base made some brilliant defensive plays in New York over the weekend. Machado and Davis on the corners. And Matt Wieters. How about Manny Machado, the defensive play he made at Yankee Stadium. One of the best you will ever see. And look at the amazement from Cruz. Everybody in amazement from that great play. Thought that was the best reaction look we've ever seen. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Here is uh, Murphy, David Murphy, getting the start in left field, their regular left fielder. He too has had some problems of late at the plate, hitting only 222 on the year. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if one or both of these teams' offenses can pick the pace up. I mean, the Orioles have been all about offense all season long. Texas more about pitching, but still with a very solid offense. But they too are very quiet. Murphy, like many of these players, a big hitter here at Camden Yards, 338, four home runs in 20 games played in this ballpark. One ball, two strikeout. Little shift on in the infield. And Murphy will take the breaking ball, a little miss down low. And the count will go to two and two from Scott Feldman. There you see the numbers for Murphy here in this ballpark. Rangers winning some ball games here last year during the regular season, Mike was talking about. Another chopper to second base. Casillas got it. Two down. Here are the numbers for Scott Feldman with the Rangers up until going to the Cubs. That's where he'd been. Yeah, pretty good numbers. I mean, 39, 34 with a 4.81. A lot of innings pitched. Now listen, this guy, look at that. One out of three pitchers with 100 starts and 100 relief appearances with Texas. So, you know, offers great versatility for the Orioles if by chance he does get moved to the bullpen. Obviously uh, very comfortable in that role as well. 
And he works to Cruz. Nelson Cruz, he and Adrian Beltre following him in the lineup are the two who have had the consistent offenses going this season. He's got 16 doubles, 22 home runs, 67 RBIs on the year. And Feldman's pitch will miss down low. So it's right here at 3 4 in the order that Feldman will be taking due care. Because these are the guys in the lineup, as you look at it right now, that you don't want to beat you in this series. Popped up, and it'll be back into the seats and a two ball, one strike count. Talked about the averages against the Orioles since the Orioles moved to Baltimore. Cabrera's got the best, then Adrian Gonzalez, Cruz, and Murphy both in this game on that top five. Yeah, so you certainly have to be careful with some of these Rangers hitters, and they like hitting here at Camden Yards. And the delivery on the way to him, that's a chopper. It is a fair ball. And Feldman will make the play in a very solid first inning as he comes out clean. One, two, three. When we come back, a look at the Orioles lineup. Any night out, there you go. That took some, <laughs> they had to go through the closet to find that, you know. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Orioles. It'll be Marquegas, Machado, and Jones, Davis, Wieters, and Hardy, McLeod, Roberts, and Casilla. Manny Machado still leading the majors with those 39 two bangers. And here's a scouting report for Derek Holland tonight. He has a power arm. He can work his fastball up in the mid 90s, but has a real good swing and miss slider. He's got a curve and a change to go along with that repertoire. The cross body delivery to go along with that 90 plus mile an hour fastball. It adds some deception, creates really tough angles on both lefties and righties. And he has some road success away from his home park in Arlington. He is four and one with a 2.95 earned run average. There is numbers 3.13 earned run average on the year. Mark Kekas will pop that one up outside of third base. So on the first pitch Nick went after it and retired as Beltre is there to put it away. Here's a look at the Rangers defense tonight behind Holland Murphy Beltre and Martin in the outfield. Andrus at shortstop Kinsler at second base Beltre and Moreland on the corners with A.J. Perzinski the veteran behind the plate. And as for Machado. And the defensive play that he made uh, yesterday, Oriole fans welcoming back home with a big round of applause as he stands in. Manny Machado has faced Holland three times, 0 for 3 against him. Holland's delivery to him will be taken for a strike. The Orioles continuing to see a plethora of left handed pitchers against them. They have done pretty well as far as the record is concerned. They are 14 and 12, sixth best percentage against lefties in the American League but the average continues to drop overall against left handers Orioles hitting 248 as opposed to 276 off the right handers ground ball base hit into right field even with Moreland move way over off first base Machado shoots it through for a single. Boy, Manny Machado has stayed so consistent with his approach all year. 
And that's another good sign right there, backing up a really good fastball to drive it the other way. The man he chants, the man he signs, the man he t shirts are everywhere. Here is Adam Jones, a couple of the four All Stars hit back to back in the lineup for the Orioles. Orioles coming off that road trip, as we said, where they averaged only 2.7 runs a game. The team hit 205 on the road trip. The pitching was outstanding with a combined 3-2-0 ERA. The bats coming alive early in this one. That's going to be a base hit. Murphy over to get a runner going to third. Murphy's throw. They got Jones caught between first and second. Runner at third. Machado will try and break home if he can. Nobody covering first. Throw to third. And he gets back in. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Holland had gone to cover behind the plate, so the pitcher was not available to get down and cover first base. And he was in the right place. Yeah, Holland moved over there, expecting the throw from uh, left field to go on to third, so he was in a backup position there. Nobody covering first. We'll take a look. A pretty aggressive play by Manny because this Rangers outfield, they got some strong arms. Andrus with the cut. And Adam Jones hung up, and he's in the stall pattern right now. But as soon as he sees nobody's covering, he's not catching Adam Jones. And Kinsler tries to throw behind, but no chance to get Machado. So the Orioles get runners on at first and third with only one down. And Chris Davis at the plate. 33 home runs leading the major leagues, 85 RBIs, second in the American League to Cabrera. He is third in average coming into today's play at 320. So the Orioles get a chance to jump on Holland, and the pitch will be taken inside. Chris is also hitting 395 with runners in scoring position, second only to Cabrera's incredible 446 number. Davis. Not had a hit in his last seven at bats coming off the road trip. 2 0 delivery to him, and that will be taken inside, and he goes up in the count from Holland 3 0. Holland definitely being careful with Chris Davis, but you know Chris Davis has got the green light here. Davis, of course, also with the history in Texas. That's where he was playing, where the Orioles acquired him and Tommy Hunter. That ball is put up in the air. This is only the sixth game that Davis has played against Texas since the deal. Hitting at 118 in those ball games, but obviously a limited number of at bats. So you've got the Orioles starter, Scott Feldman, played with Texas this year. You got Davis, the one that got away, as the story is written nowadays, along with Tommy Hunter picked up in that deal. And they're both in this ball game and a big part of it. And the other way foul. And a three ball two strike count. Let's take a look at the most RBI before the all star break. Boog Powell the legendary Boog Powell leading the way with 86 but Chris Davis just one away right behind him with 85. Gentleman Jim Gentile with 82. Rafael Palmero and Tejada also on that list. Davis 3 2 count Holland trying to work his way out of a jam looking for a ground ball. And a double play here if he can get one off Davis, but Chris doesn't hit a lot of ground balls. He's hit into only two ground ball double plays this season, which is pretty amazing. Well, it is. And one thing that's overlooked with Chris Davis is he can run pretty good for a big guy. 3 2 delivery, and there goes the bat all the way down to the stands beyond first base. Holland gets a big strikeout, and there are two down. Quite a bat toss there from Chris Davis as well. That's a season record as well. That there's no question. <laughs> it wasn't hasn't been anything close to the distance that bat went. So Holland with two down will now face Matt Wieters. Two away, runners on at first and third base. Great scoring chance for the Orioles. Matt against Holland, 0 for 8. And there's that turnover pitch. 
Called a change up in this day and age. Years gone by would have been referred to as a screwball because of the direction it takes down and away from the right handers. Oh one count. Leaders 246 with runners in scoring position on the year. This is where the Orioles also struggled on the road trip. The Orioles went five for 35 with runners in scoring position on the road trip and they left 31 runners on base. Against the Yankees the Orioles were only two for 17 in the three game set in New York. Holland with a one ball one strike delivery and that will miss. And the count goes to two and one. Well the Orioles offense uh, definitely went into a lull here on this past road trip but you're certainly only as good as your last game and that victory last night against the Yankees was huge. A huge confidence booster for Adam Jones of course and really lifted the spirits of the team to make that road trip really feel a lot better. Sweet by the Yankees at Yankee Stadium would have made last night a lot longer on the way home. Yes. A throw over and Jones is back to the bag. Adam not going very far off. Moreland holding the bag on him. Two ball, one strike count. Orioles trying to get on the board here with two outs. And Waiters will sing through that one on another off speed delivery. Really throttled back on that. Two and two. Yeah, he's been going to the slider. Now, this one he got away with it is up in the zone, and that's hammer time. And Matt Waiters wishing he could get that one back. Guy goes 2 2 with two down. Machado off third, Jones off first. 2 2 delivery on the way, and Waiters is struck out. Holland, a great job right there, and the Orioles start the ball game 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. Your chance to win the grand prize. Just go to MassinSports.com. We go to the second inning. Bell trade. Verzinski and Moreland will be due up for Texas. Not much of a breeze here tonight. In fact, right now, virtually none. We said it was 88 at game time, but a pretty nice evening for the first of four against Texas. Orioles uh, will have Zach Britton pitching tomorrow night. Wei In Chen is going to be back. In the rotation, pitching in game three, and Miguel Gonzalez in game four. Martin Perez will start tomorrow night against Britain. Ron Washington is not named a starter for game three, and you, Darvish, will be the starter for the finale of the series. There's Ron Washington. He's got Nelson Cruz, Joe Nathan, and you, Darvish, on the all star team, three of them from Texas. Buck Schoelder, of course, with the four for the Orioles who are going to be going to City Field in New York. Here is Adrian Beltre. Beltre with a nine game hit streak coming into the ball game, hitting 274 overall. And Feldman's pitch will miss for a ball. Beltre's had a lot of at bats against Feldman. 
He was playing other than in Texas, so he faced Feldman, but he's two for 19 with a home run. And that pitch is there for a strike one to one. Well, Feldman has uh, faced Texas this year when he was with the Cubs and really had great success. Seven innings and only two hits. Shut out baseball. Come away with a victory there. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way, and that's there for a strike. Dave Magadan, the hitting coach for Texas, said of Feldman, he pretty much, and you can finish the sentence. <laughs> one ball, two strike out. <laughs> Infield shift is on against Beltre. Ooh! Obviously got him up high until we see the replay. I'm not sure quite where. And I think it got him up in the tricep area maybe. This one gets away. Of course Matt Weider setting up in. I think it's a slider. Hard slider. Mm. See the rotation there. It is but it just. He just lost it right off the back of the elbow. Well, he might be wearing an elbow pad as next at bat. Well, fourth hit batter on the season by Feldman. All the previous three coming with Chicago. So that'll put a man on at first base. Beltre hit by a pitch for the second time this year. And here's Przezinski who will take it for a strike. Przezinski back in behind the plate for this Texas team. 274 batting average overall, but those numbers came primarily earlier in the year. He too has had a struggle, three for his last 29 at the plate for AJ. 0 1 delivery, and that will be fouled away. We'll take a look at Scott Feldman's off speed pitching. April and May, pretty good with a 188 batting average and a 313 slugging percentage against him, but great adjustments made, and he's having a lot more success through June and July. Just a 143 batting average, 229 opponent's slugging percentage. He's had 117 career starts, going 41 and 45 in him. Feldman knocks it down. There's Hardy, there's one relay, and there's two. Well, that's how you help yourself if you're a starting pitcher. It's a hard comeback or one hopper. Feldman making it look easy. Relay on to the All Star J.J. Hardy. Easy double play there. Great snag by Feldman. Good throw as well. That is a clean double play to get out of that little jam. So now two down, nobody on. And that will bring up Moreland. Moreland's got an 0 for 3 lifetime against Feldman. And at the plate right now is one of the reasons the Rangers were willing to part with Chris Davis. Moreland was going to get time in at first base. They weren't willing to make a change in that regard. A veteran who'd earned it. See Beltre being treated over there and where he got hit by that pitch. We'll see if that affects his ability to go on in the ballgame. Oh, on the count. And Moreland will swing through it. Matt Wieters took that one. Foul ball that came back on him. Going to be that kind of game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Matt takes a beating back there. There's a breaking ball. And it's coming down and just gets enough of it. Oh, top of the foot. Not much padding there. So the home plate umpire, Brian Onora, gives Wieters a little chance to regroup. For Moreland uh, and Mitch Moreland has had just three hits in his last 26 at bats covering eight games. Had a right hand string problem that took him off uh, the field for a while in early June. Pitch will be taken up high. And the count goes to one ball and two strikes. One two count two down nobody on Moreland. The first baseman against the 30 year old right hander the Orioles second start for the O's seven and six overall in the year. And he'll come inside. Two ball, two strike count. This Texas team is sixth in average and ninth in runs coming into the ball game. They are third in home runs. Both of these teams, Ron Washington's ball club, relies on the homer, just like the Orioles, to score runs. The Rangers' ERA, however, is number one in the league. 
And a swing and a miss. Great pitch by Feldman. And he only has to face three, even with the hit batter to lead it off. Orioles, Hardy, McLeod, and Roberts coming up. Claude Swanson from Germantown. Claude, you've won 500 for being selected. You win 100 more for every Orioles hit during the ball game, and 500 for any Orioles home run fifth inning. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game, play five card cash. Go to mdlottery.com/slash Orioles to enter. J.J. Hardy stands in against Holland as we go to the bottom of the second inning, and the pitch will be taken up high for a ball. 251 on the season for the Oriole All Star shortstop. Only 207 off left handers. The number Hardy and the Orioles keep uh, waiting to climb a little bit against Holland. He is 0 for 7. 1 1 delivery by the lefty. Takes here the 0 for right there. They sit leading off the inning. Hardy on. Tomorrow, the first 10,000 fans, 15 and over, the Rangers game will get the Nate McClough Base Bandit t shirt. Don't miss a great collector's item. Plus, every Tuesday is Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. All upper reserve seats, only nine bucks. So get your Nate McClough t shirt, save on the tickets, and have a great time at the yard. 888 848 Bird, or go to Orioles.com. And there he is, the Base Bandit. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Play that bandit of love song there. Runner on at first base and at third base is Beltray on the grass. McLeod shows bunt, drags a beauty. He's going to look to first only. Holland will get the out. Good sacrifice for McLeod. And Hardy is moved down to second base. So Nate gets it done. Take a look at our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact. Last four home games, the Orioles are undefeated. Big average, seven home runs, 26 runs. Pitching staff outstanding in that win streak, 2-5-0, 33 strikeouts, one against Cleveland, three against New York. Outstanding numbers there, and they look to continue that. Finish strong, obviously, this week before the All-Star break. Orioles have won eight of the last 11 here at home, including the four in a row they've picked up. So McLeod with the sacrifice his third of the year. Gives Brian Roberts the RBI chance. Brian again is the designated hitter in this ball game. He's got a two for seven lifetime off Holland, and will take the pitch away for a ball. Orioles still second overall as a team with runners in scoring position in the American League at 282. Pretty good secondary lead for Hardy. 1-0 delivery strike on the outside corner. Real good arms in center and right. Angel Beltre, the youngster in center, has got a solid arm. Martin in right field does. Murphy, probably what you'd call an average arm in left field. Right. 
One ball, one strike count, one away. And a strike on the outside corner. And the count will go to one and two. Brian with the limited chances since getting back only the fifth time with a runner in scoring position. 0 for 4 so far. One ball, two strike count. Pops that one up. Behind second base. Kinsler back. Beltre in. Beltre's got it. And a very good imitation of Leapfrog. <laughs> That's very well done. You can't just do that without practicing it. Two down. Fortunately, it was a gentle right. collision. Yeah, fortunately, nobody hurt. Kinsler going back. He doesn't wave his arms, and at the last second, Beltre with the call. But Kinsler can't get out of the way. And down they go. Let's take a look at the Verizon Exmo. And down they go. Down goes Kensler. Here's Alexei Casilla. Casilla getting the start at second base. Runner still out there. One strike, two down. Orioles now 0 for 3. With runners in scoring position early in the ballgame. Casillas had a 3 for 9. Off Holland. So in effect the Orioles get these. Two leadoff batters. 1-9. One and 1 in the first spot. Short stop. Whoa. Andrus has it. That was a frozen rope. Somehow he was able to catch the ball. And keep his glove on. As Casilla. On a fine play by Elvis Andrus. History 1958 the American League defeated the National League 4 3 in an all star game with no extra base hits in 1941 one of the great all star games Ted Williams three run homer ninth inning of that all star game there were two down it was the first midsummer classic to be decided in the final inning and in 1859 Hank O'Day the umpire in the 1903 World Series was born on his way to a piece of baseball history for the 03 World Series to kick it off. And this moment in history brought to you by the Volkswagen Best Thing Ever event. Visit VWDealer.com. There were periods in that copy. Here's Elvis Andrus. Andrus, a four game hit streak. In at third, Machado even with a bag. And uh, Feldman's pitch will be in the outside corner. Clearly, if you've been watching and you're a hitter, you better be leaning out for those pitches away because Brian Honor is going to call strikes. That plate is opened up on that outer corner. Of course, a couple of veteran catchers making those pitches look that much better as well. A.J. Perzinski gotten away with a couple, and Matt Weeder's great at framing the baseball. Andrus. One ball, one strike count, hitting a 244. 
And that pitch will be taken outside. He too has had a struggle at the plate this season. He has tried to pick things up of late, worked a lot of extra batting practice. Still among the leaders in stolen bases, tied for eighth. Triples. He's got three of those. But just not getting on, not having the offensive numbers that uh, we saw last year. No, and uh, I think Rangers obviously a little disappointed in that too. Andrews uh, signing a big contract with the Rangers, and he's probably putting a little extra pressure on himself. He is certainly a great shortstop, and, and the potential obviously is there for him to be consistent. And they're just hoping he can pick it up a little bit in the second half. Two ball, two strike delivery. Feldman delivers to him and jammed him, and it's going to be a base hit. Well, that's just a good pitch fought off, and Andrus is on with a leadoff single. Second leadoff man on in the three innings. On Wednesday, don't miss your chance to meet Orioles reliever Tommy Hunter at the official Orioles team store in Yog Galleria. Tommy will be at the store 11 a.m. to noon, signing autographs and meeting fans. That's Wednesday, 11 to noon. York Galleria, York, PA. For details on all Orioles community appearances, go to OriolesReach.com. Here's Angel Beltre. Beltre getting the start in center field. He's up due to injuries on this ball club. Really a fill in player at this point. He's got great speed and a very strong arm. He got called up with Craig Gentry. Got on the DL with a non displaced fracture of the left hand. They're sure about his defensive abilities. They're sure about his speed. Not sure about the bat. Well, the Rangers organization has really been strong for a long time. And of course, that's a big reason why we got the likes of Tommy Hunter and Chris Davis over here because they were so deep in the minor leagues. And uh, they continue to bring up quality players and players that have helped them to the point, you know, where they're really having a strong season this year. Beltre is only 23 years old out of the Dominican Republic. Had not played in the majors prior to this season, a minor league 260 average coming into the year. Pitch out. Big lead was being taken by Elvis Andrus over there at first base. You know, the Orioles thought he might be going. Count goes to 1 and 0 on Elvis Belt, on uh, Angel Beltre with Martin waiting on deck. Well, very rarely do you see the Orioles pitch out because Orioles pitchers have been trained to be a little bit quicker to the plate. There he goes. Ground ball. Casilla trying to get back Davis. He does. Andrus gets moved up on the ground ball. And Beltre bounced to second base. Boy, he did have a big lead. Take a look at Scott Feldman this season by day's rest. Five and one with four days rest. When he gets five or more, two and five with a 402. And they're uh, pretty fortunate. He's pitching on four days rest tonight. 2.63 earned run average. Look at that opponent batting average at just 182. And he gets deep into ball game. 6.83 innings per start. Now the runner at second base, Andrus, and here is Martin. Leonis Martin. Hitting 295 and will take the pitch inside for a ball. Martinez never played against the Orioles prior to this ball game. Put up some very solid numbers. He's got 18 stolen bases, seven doubles, five home runs among the extra base hits. Hardy holding the runner at second. And the pitch will be taken inside. Count goes to 2 0. Oh. Well, you're going to see Texas maybe try to be a little bit more aggressive. You talked about Andrus trying to get extend his lead. He's doing it once again at second base. And, and I was talking about Orioles pitchers being trained to be quicker to the plate. And Feldman, since coming over from the Cubs, hasn't really adjusted to the mindset that Rick Adair and Buck Showalter have instilled in their pitchers. That'll go to Casilla at second base and uh, the record the out. Andrus goes to third base, and now there are two down. Yeah, in fact, Mike, today uh, before the ball game, talking with Buck Showalter, one of the things he mentioned about Scott Feldman that they've worked on, and he made it very emphatic, he's got to be faster to the plate. He doesn't meet the standards that Buck has for pitchers, and he knows it, and uh, so they've been working on that. But obviously, Texas knows it too, right. real well, since he pitched part of eight seasons with them. So exactly. Looks like they're going to try and take some big leads if they can get people on. 
And the pitch will be taken outside for a ball. Top of the order, Kinsler grounded out his first time up. Well, Just a final note on that, Mike. Base dealers are 15 out of 17 against Feldman this year. All right. Yeah, you're uh, if you're slow to the plate, base runners are going to take advantage of that for sure. 1 0 delivery, and that'll be inside. Feldman has thrown four wild pitches this year. So Andrus. Also, I'm sure aware of that. If not, I'm sure Gary Pettis has reminded him, the third base coach, get off the bag on the delivery just in case. Here's the 2 0 delivery, and that's going to be a base hit. So Kinsler comes through with an RBI single with two outs, and Texas will get on the board first, 1 0. Well, this pitch from Feldman kind of stayed up in the zone, and Kinsler, a very dangerous hitter. Middle middle and he just hammers it right there. Pick up the first RBI for the Rangers. So Ian Kensler gets the two out run batted in two who know each other well from Texas. Kensler and Davis over there talking. Kensler gets his 32nd run batted in of the year. And uh, Kensler too's got some speed even though he's just four for nine this year stealing bases. There he goes. Leaders he came back. Took about two or three steps and then stopped. He had a big jump. Yeah, you can tell they're anxious down there. Kinsler's feet were moving. Of course, Andrus, when he got on there, really extended his lead. So when base runners are getting down there, their first thought is go. He wasn't quite happy with the jump he had, so headed on back. David Murphy will take the pitch down low for a ball. The other thing, obviously, Texas hopes to do in doing this. Is to just upset the rhythm of Feldman. Oh yeah. Even if they don't steal a base, at least get him to think about it. Part of the game uh, inside the game, you know, try to get into a pitcher's head, disrupt them a little bit. They tend to rush and make mistakes. Oh my gosh! Here's the throw. Winners, beautiful throw to Getty, and Kinsler had an enormous jump, and Winners still able to get him by a good couple of feet. Throwing out 39% of base stealers on the year. Waiters helps his battery mate. A run in, couple of hits, nobody left on base. Your boy brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Yeah, how about Nick Markakis? Best batting average in July since 2012. Nick Markakis leading the way with 394 numbers. Mike Trout behind him, 378. Alex Gordon, 358. Melky Cabrera hits well, too. David Ortiz, the veteran, at 350. And how about this year, Nick Markakis? April, May, very consistent. A little June drop at 229, but July heating right back up to 455. Nick has the fourth highest batting average in July coming into the ball game uh, today. Pretty good averages in July on the other side. Beltre is just ahead of him, Adrian Beltre, in the July average. 
Mark Hagas took the first pitch and popped out in his first at bat. McLeod and John, uh, Machado and Jones to follow here. Against Holland, he is now four for 12 in his career. Nick, a real good average against Texas lifetime. Ooh, look out. Not that one back. You see, against the Rangers last year, the 360 average with two home runs and six RBIs against a Texas team that was putting up a lot of runs against the Orioles. He is the primary responder for the O's. Holland, the 1 2 delivery on the way, and that's up the middle and a base hit. So the Orioles have the leadoff man on two out of three innings. All right, Nick Markakis is as dangerous as any hitter in the game with two strikes. He has limited movement. He about took Holland's head off right there with a line drive back to the box. And that'll bring up Manny Machado. One nothing lead for the Rangers. The Orioles get their fourth hit. The Texas Rangers have two. Machado picked up a single. In his first at bat, Marquez off first base. Machado is going to get another one. Base hit into right field. Turn is made. Martin up with it. We'll get it back in, and the Orioles now have two on with nobody out. Third inning. Take a look. There were eight players, 21 years old or younger, that have played in the majors this season. Eight, and four of them are going to the All-Star game. I find that an incredible number. Machado, Trout, Harper, and Fernandez. It really is amazing. I mean, it's great for baseball, obviously, to have that many superstars at that young of an age. I mean, really, it's just a new generation here of uh, superstars to follow. And it's great that they'll get the notoriety playing in the All Star game will bring to them. Yeah. And for baseball fans. So Adam Jones gets the chance. He had a single his first time up, two on, and nobody out. Orioles 0 for 2 in the first inning with runners in scoring position. And then ended up 0 for 2 in the second inning. Here's another chance. Jones. And a one strikeout. Well, Adam Jones staying aggressive. A good opportunity to drive some runs in here, but chases one out of the zone early in the count. Had his mind made up. He was going to swing. Derek Holland taking a look back at second. Adam now two for 11. Lifetime off the left hander. Infield squeezing the middle with Kinsler and Andrus both move towards second base. Here's the 0 1 delivery and Jones pitch that came in on him. 0 2 count. Well, Holland very effective. We talked about his uh, cross body type delivery. And it really creates a tough angle on righties. As if he, he isn't he is fearless throwing the ball in, especially the dangerous right handed hitter like Adam Jones. Oh to the count. Jones chops that one foul. For Adam Jones yesterday, a day to remember against Mariano Rivera. The home run in the ninth inning. A two run shot. And it gave the Orioles a 2 1 win. Adam now seven go ahead home runs in the ninth inning or later, tied for the most since 09, and one of two players to have a home run when trailing versus Mariano in the ninth inning or later. Benjamin Lee is the other in 2004. Yeah, pretty impressive. And Adam Jones certainly uh, will remember that one for the rest of his life. 0 oh, 2 the cow runners off first and second base. Jones. Golfs that one up in the air. Infield fly rule in effect. Look out. Third baseman Beltre. Apparently the Rangers don't like talking to one another. <laughs> We've already seen Angel Beltre and Kinsler collide. That time Andrus and Beltre a little bump. And Beltre still looking over there. I really think he thought that was his ball. Yeah, getting a little chuckle out of that one. But geez, let's communicate a little bit. I mean, it's uh, obviously Beltre's ball right on the third base bag. Andrews wanting to pad that fielding percentage a little bit. Coming to take one. And smile about it, though. You can see who the veteran was by the way Andrews turned and left. <laughs> right. He wasn't sticking around <laughs> to have a chat on that as soon as he realized. 
that Beltre is going to make the catch. He just turned around and walked away. He is going to compete in the home run derby. Chris Davis, selected by Robinson Cano, the captain of the American team for the home run derby, will join Cano, Prince Fielder, and one more to be named for the American League. National League captain David Wright selected Bryce Harper, Carlos Gonzalez, and Michael Kadaya for the home run derby. Should be exciting. Some thumpers there. None more so than Chris. And off speed delivery. Big arm motion and zip velocity. Great pitch. And he's really had good location with his breaking balls this afternoon or this evening. Really his best pitch. I mean, his slider has been devastating for him this year. 0 oh, 2, the delivery on the way, and uh, tried to speed that one up and missed down low with it. For Chris Davis, of course, the years with the Texas Rangers trying to earn a job. There are the career numbers he had with them. It's a lot of games. 248 batting average, 42 home runs, 124 RBIs, big OPS in 2008 through 2011, but just not any consistent time. Yeah, I mean, he had a really good year with, with the Rangers, but he was up and down for a couple years. They had some quality first basemen, and they were just trying to figure out which one was going to take off. And uh, they didn't think Chris was going to be the one to do that. So they parted ways with him. And the Orioles very fortunate, obviously, to get Chris Davis. Yep. Count goes to two balls and two strikes on Chris. Buck Showalter who kept looking and looking at those Chris Davis numbers in the minors. Two ball, two strike out. Marquegas off second. Machado off first. And Davis reaching will go down swinging. Holland gets his third strikeout, two of them on Davis. Well, let's take a look at the Verizon Fios Exmo right here. A hard slider, and it just takes off that late bite away. It ends up about a foot and a half off the plate to get the slugger Chris Davis. Verizon Fios making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. And that will bring up Matt Wieters. Wieters with two down. Launches it, but it's going to be foul. Matt had a chance in the first inning, first and third, with two down and struck out. Now he's got first and second with two down. Orioles are already 0 for 6. With runners in scoring position. They're getting people on early in the innings, but not able to move them around yet. 0 oh, 1 count. Holland's delivery taken down low. Pierzynski moving over to get it. Pretty good take right there by Matt Wieters, aware of that slider. The hard one down and in on righties. He likes to try to back foot it. He bounced that one a little bit in front of Matt. And lefties, you saw it against Chris Davis, kind of sweeping away on that outside corner. One ball, one strike count. And Wieters, that's where he speeds it up. It's got to look like it's going 180 miles an hour, right? He has a firm fastball, and the lefties that can throw in the mid 90s, it is uh, really tough to pick up. We talk about his delivery, it's hard to, he has good deception. That road earned run average at 295 is the fifth lowest road ERA in the American League. One ball, two strike count on Wieters. And that pitch will be taken. And missed two and two. Rangers won the season series last year. Five games to two, but the Orioles had their revenge with that first ever wild card playoff game. As Nate McClouth drove in a pair of runs in that 5 1 Orioles win. As these two teams have not met since that ball game. Two ball, two strike count. Wieters fouls it over the screen. Well, Matt Wieters has 30 extra base hits this season, 19 of them on fastballs. You make a mistake with an off-speed pitch, though. Look at that: six on changeups, five on breaking balls. Still has the ability with that great leverage to drive it in the gaps for some extra base hits. 
Matt with a 203 lifetime average against Texas and one home run. Holland wants the signs again, so Weeders will step out. Hollins is only 26 years old. And he's got perhaps a great career in front of him. He's 45 and 33 already. And he got him. So you get them the strikeouts when he needs them. That's four. He ended the first inning with two on two Ks, and he does the same thing here in the third. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. Gary Thornton, Mike Bordick here at Camden Yards. Good crowd on hand. This should be a very entertaining baseball series with four against these Texas Rangers. They've won 51 games. The Orioles have won 49. And both are in second place in their respective divisions. The Rangers beat the Astros 5 4 yesterday, finishing up a 5 and 4. Homestand. Now uh, take to the road. Going into the All Star break, seven game, seven day road trip, four here and three in Detroit. David Murphy will lead it off. Scott Feldman, number two hitter up against him. Foul back. With three innings gone in this game. The Orioles now have not allowed an extra base hit in a ball game in the last 24 innings. Those games against the Yankees, of course, 10 singles on Saturday, singles yesterday. Ichiro had the last extra base hit against the Orioles, and that was on Friday in the fifth inning. Yeah, starting uh, rotation has really stepped up for the Orioles and, and pitched well, kept them in. Basically all these ball games it's just unfortunate the Orioles offense kind of faded a little bit through the week, but there's a look at Miguel Gonzalez. He had a good start. Chris Tillman had a good start. Hamill. I mean really you think about it to limit teams to just singles is they're doing their job. Not and now it's off the end of the bat of Murphy. Yeah, not making a lot of mistakes. No, we told you on the road trip. Hamill and Tillman, part of it, starters. Ended up with an 0 and 2 record, but their ERA was 396. And overall, the team ERA in those six games on the road was 3.2. I mean, that'll usually win you four or five ball games. Yeah, especially at the rate this Orioles offense uh, produces runs. I mean, they're right up around five per game. But on the road trip, 2.7. All right. Murphy with the 221 batting average waits on it. He'll put it up in the air to center field. Jones. One down, fourth inning. On Friday, a Birdland fan favorite returns. First 20,000 fans, 21 and over, will get the 83 World Series Championship 30th anniversary floppy hat presented by Miller Lite. And a great fireworks display after the game. So get your tickets in advance. 888 848 Bird to go to Orioles.com. That's for Friday. 
Toronto will be in town. Here is Nelson Cruz. One down, nobody on. Cruz to the pitcher his first time up. Foul back. Cruz, one of the game's best. 274, 67 RBIs. As we said, he'll be headed out to uh, headed to New York for the All Star Game. Second appearance. 0 1 delivery. That's going to be a base hit into right field. A slashing opposite field hit. One on, one down. Pretty good piece of hitting right there. Not trying to do too much with it. Actually, a pretty good pitch. Feldman down in the zone. Stayed on it. Drive it the other way. Everybody gets the first base is like a homecoming. <laughs> right. <laughs> Every time they get down there, they're all talking to Chris Davis as they all were in the organization with Texas together. Here's Beltre hit by a pitch his first time up. Took one on the elbow. Takes that one in the air to left center field. That is way back. It'll take a bounce off the wall. In the second base with a double. Good throw by Jones to hold the runner at third. And that'll take care of the extra base hit numbers as Beltre gets a two bagger. And with one away, runners at second and third. And Beltre's 22nd double of the year. And this pitch just stayed in the middle of play. Take a look right here. Pretty much center cut right in the center box, and he drives it. One hop off the wall. Adam Jones plays it well, gets it back in quickly. You know, might have been offline a little bit. You see Beltre hustling into second base. Cruz had to hold up at third. So two in scoring position. And here is A.J. Pierzynski. But Showalter moving the right side in. In the infield a couple of steps. Even with the left handed bat up there now the whole infield creeps in. And Pierzynski's hit by a pitch. That went clunk off the armor. The second hit batter in the ball game and the fifth of the year by Feldman. Well, Feldman once again with that cutter, and this one takes off from Przinski. He just doesn't even flinch. He's got the elbow pad on, and he takes one for the team. Yeah, and there's Feldman. He didn't even move. That's why some uh, believe that that equipment should not be allowed, or at least to the extent it is. So they're loaded up. Cruz on at third base, a single, the double by Beltre, and now the hit batter Przinski, who over the years has been one who's taken a few clunks. Base is loaded. Only one down. Moreland, the strikeout victim, is first time up. One nothing lead for the Rangers threatening here. And that ball is going to be blooped. That should fall in. It's a base hit. Scoring Cruz. Beltre's held up. Jones gets it back in all the way to the plate. And a little station to station ball. Moreland gets the RBI. And a 2 nothing Texas lead. Now bases loaded. Hitters are going to be a little more aggressive, and this one just kind of up in the zone. It gets in on him, breaks his bat, but it bloops, finds a hole out there in front of Adam Jones. Pick up an RBI. Bases remain loaded. Moreland with the base hit, RBI number 35. He's on it first. Now Andrus, who had a single his first time up, he'll stand in with the bases loaded. Bellman's delivery to him, and that is in there for a strike. Seeking that ground ball double play, not easy against Andrus with the speed that he's got, but he has grounded into nine double plays. Andrus with a five game hit streak. Here's the 0 1 delivery to him, and that will be low and a one ball, one strike count. Scott Feldman now has given up the two runs on five hits in the ball game, two hits in the third, three more here in the fourth. And Andrus watches it down low. 
Andrus has had a three for eight with the bases loaded this year. Picked up nine RBIs in these situations. No grand slam for them. They haven't had a grand slam this season. 2 1 delivery on the way. One up, tried to jump on one up high, fouls it off. Well, starts him off with a breaking ball. Nice breaking ball for a first pitch strike and tries to get the two seamer down in the zone. But Andrews doesn't bite on it after a couple pitches and then goes back to that breaking ball. And that one kind of stayed up. Unfortunately for Feldman, he fouled that one off. And let me give Nelson Cruz his due. He has had two grand slams, the two that Texas has picked up this year. Nelson Cruz has them both. Two ball, two strike delivery on the way. Andrews takes it outside. 3 2, one down, bases loaded. Run in here in the fourth inning. Scott Feldman up to 56 in the pitch count. Andrus waiting, 3 2 delivery, and it's a ground ball to short. Hardy bobbled. There's one. Relay picked, and they got him. And credit Chris Davis. Coming up with a big pick at first base. Casilla had to hustle as Hardy batted it, kept it alive. Casilla, the good pivot and the good pick by Davis. One run in, 2 0 Texas. NC Bank for the achiever in you. Yeah, we've been keeping track of Eddie Gamboa. He's come up with the knuckleball on this season and Bowie double A four and six record with a 3.64 earned run average that earned run average and the 79 punch outs earned him a promotion at triple A Norfolk where he is going to be tested with some better caliber of players and see how that knuckleball uh, works out and Buck Showalter he's been a magician converting pitchers who've had success on that knuckleball R.A. Right, Dickey of course on that list and J.J. Hardy at the plate for the Orioles as we go to the fourth inning bottom of the fourth single for Hardy Hardy McLeod and Roberts and the pitch will be taken down low two runs five hits no errors the Rangers the Orioles 0 5 and 0 Orioles have left five. The Rangers have left two. Left hander with a 2 0 delivery. And will miss inside. So Hardy gets ahead on the count 3 0. JJ picking up just his second hit of the month. Two for 24 this month. But he's on here. And that'll be a leadoff walk for the Orioles. When the Orioles win, everyone wins. And all season long, when the Orioles win and score five or more, you get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com. Just enter the promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's valid at participating Baltimore area. Papa John's. Well, every inning, the Orioles have really put some pressure on Holland. And this time, a leadoff walk. J.J. Hardy, see if they can capitalize this inning. 
Aid McLeod thump. McLeod the sacrifice his first time up. Beltre again is in at third. Not showing bunt there. Holland comes in with the 10th best ERA in the league at 313. He is seventh in strikeouts. Started with 107. He's added four to that in this game. Teams 11 and 6 in his starts. That one drilled to the wall. Right off the sign. Big jump for Hardy. He's going to third. Throw to second. Not in time. A double by McLeod on a fine throw by Martin from right. But he's in with a two bagger, and Ron Washington is out to argue the call with Bill Welke at second base. Well, quite a throw right there from Martin. And Nate McLeod hammered that ball off the wall, and it got back into the infield quickly. Andrews argued the play as well. Let's take a look at it here. From the Verizon Fios, Nate McLeod, look at him get behind that baseball and just hammers it off the wall but here's a good look at the wolf arm strength of Martin one hopper and just tags him up high and that's a good call as Nate McClough was out <laughs> but he said in there it's a close play so but. McLeod gets the call and runners at second and third base now with nobody out and here's Brian Roberts Roberts the designated hitter Beltre will play even with the bag at third. And the pitch on the outside corner for a strike. For the Orioles, Mike said, have really kept the heat on all four innings now. Holland's had to work with runners in scoring position. The Orioles 0 for 7. 0 oh, on delivery. Roberts another. That'll get a run home. Holland over to cover. And throw it behind him. That'll get two runs in. Hardy and McLeod both score. Down to second base goes Roberts as Moreland's throw nowhere near Holland trying to cover the bag. Well, you see time and time again through the course of the season. First baseman just ranging too far off the bag, and it's a tough play for a pitcher. Okay, there's Moreland with the play. But the pitcher's on the run. Look at that. He throws behind him. Orioles defense plays it differently. Chris Davis makes a good read. He'll let the second baseman feed, field that ball and throw back to him. And the Orioles take advantage of that miscue. Now Casilla. The corner's in defensively. Runner at second. Game tied at two. And he does show bunt pickoff. Look. No throw by Pierzynski. It's an error charged on the first baseman. There will be an RBI credited to Roberts. And the other run scores on the error. And the Orioles get the ball game tied up. Texas third coming into the ball game tied for seventh in defensive fielding. There's the bunt of beauty. Play's got to go to first. Holland will take it there. It'll be a sacrifice credited to Casilla moving Roberts to third base with one away. Orioles doing a nice job playing some small ball here. Casilla executing the perfect sacrifice bunt. Get Brian Roberts over to third. Second sacrifice of the year picked up by Casilla. Now the infield will move in with one down. Nick Marquegas a single and he has popped out. Runner at third is Roberts. And the Orioles get a chance to go on top in the ball game here in the fourth inning. Barakagas will take the pitch. It is there for a strike. Nick 308 with runners in scoring position. Holland up to 57. Towards the seats and out of play. AJ Krasinski out of play as well. So right down into the dugout after that one. AJ knowing he can't catch the ball there, so going down there is just a visit. Right. Rule change to protect catchers. He used to go over there, jump into the dugout over the fence and the post and the steps. So they changed the rule now. You can reach in, but you can't go in the dugout and make a play. So 
It's a dead ball. Nick Markakis with a two strike out. Infield stays in. Roberts off third base. Markakis ground ball runner not going. Kinsley will record the out. Two down. Boy the runs have been hard to come by. Two out chance now. Manny Machado stands in. Machado already has picked up two singles in the game. He has equaled in this game half the number of hits he had for the rest of July. He's now six for 26 this month. Two away runner at third base. And that'll be inside for a ball. Holland trying to keep it tied. Roberts trying to get across for the go ahead. 1 0 delivery. Breaking ball misses 2 0. We'll go hard in first pitch on Manny Machado because Holland's been hurt by Machado here on pitches away. Start the ball game back to back singles on fastballs on that outer third. 2 0 delivery to him and that'll be foul. Well, one strike count on Machado. All the Oriole All Stars met with the press prior to the game. They, of course, were in New York when the All Star teams were announced. So the four representatives from the Orioles got together with the press before the game today. And that's a base hit at an RBI. Machado brings Roberts in, and the Orioles have their first lead of the ball game, three to two. Another great piece of hitting by Manny Machado. And this slider stays up just enough. And Manny with the extension just hammers it through that 5 6 hole. Andrews with the good effort. Just too much on that one. Machado picks up RBI number 43. Gives the Orioles a 3 2 lead. They're out hitting the Rangers now 7 to 5. Machado's 35th multi hit game, tying him with Mike Trout. For the American League lead in multi hit ball games. And the list goes on. Here's Adam Jones, a single, and he has popped out. Jones, a lifetime 285 hitter against the Rangers with seven career home runs off him. And the pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. The Rangers poured the runs on against the Orioles. Last year they won the series five out of seven. They outscored the Orioles 56 to 24 in the regular season games. The Orioles got their revenge in that wild card playoff game, winning it five to one. Here's the 0-1 delivery on the way. Jones to the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Machado will make the turn and stay. Adam Jones has a two hit ball game two for three. There you go another good piece of hitting by Adam Jones. You keep it on the plate and he's going to square one up. And stays hard to the middle. Good piece of hitting. Well, the Orioles have eight hits on the board and Mike Maddox the pitching coach. Coming out to have a visit. Holland had been almost unhittable. Over the last three starts. Teams were hitting nine for 68 against him in the last three games. A 173 batting average. The Orioles have already picked up eight hits off him. Yeah, I mean he's aggressive in the zone. The Orioles really taking advantage of it this inning and really throughout the whole ball game have put some pressure on him. But he's been able to come up with some big pitches, but not here. That error obviously being costly, and the, of course the walk to J.J. Hardy to start this inning off. Chris Davis two on and two outs Davis has been struck out twice by Holland and that is in there for a strike to him 
Chris 267 off left handers. Eight of the 33 home runs have come off lefties. Chris has had a couple of home runs so far in the month of July. Here's the 0-1 delivery. Mm, nasty pitch. 0-2. And that's some pretty good late movement. Really pounding Chris Davis hard in here the first couple pitches. Oh, two, two away. Runners off first and second. Davis outside to him. Count goes to one and two. That's what it looks like on the Crush Davis shirts. The great keepsake. Here's the one two delivery and up high. Two balls and two strikes from Holland. And let one go there, 95 miles an hour up and just out of the zone. Holland certainly at the advantage right now with two strikes. And he's got some weapons, but Chris Davis showing some patience. 2 2 with two down. Holland's delivery to him inside. Did he go? Nope. Adrian Johnson down to third. So the runners will be going. Three balls, two strikes, two away. Take a look. Did Chris Davis go this inside fastball? No. He's strong like Bull. He held up there. Three ball, two strike count. There go the runners. Davis, a chopper off his foot. Now uh, it'll stay at three and two. Orioles with three runs in. Roberts and Machado have the RBIs. Another scored on an error. Manny out there. 13th three hit game. That is the most in the majors. He isn't even halfway through the ball game yet. Three two delivery again, and he walked him. They're loaded again. Well, that's a great at bat by Chris Davis. He chased the slider down and away in his previous at bat. He locked in there. So the free pass will load him up against Holland. Orioles have batted around. Weeders will be the ninth to come to the plate. He, like Davis, has struck out twice in the ball game. You saw the numbers piling up for Holland at 70. Three on. Machado the single, Jones a single, Davis a walk. And the pitch boxed at the plate. Weeders takes it for a ball. When this Orioles offense is right. There is no let up, and they're kind of showing that tonight against Holland. It really hasn't been an easy out, and he's had to labor through. Weeders with one grand slam this year, two for seven, with the bases loaded. 1 0 delivery doing. Chopper and tag put on, but it was foul. That was the only play A.J. Przinsky was going to have. And he had to make the decision of whether to pick it up and try and tag him or let it go and hope it went foul. Yeah, he thought he had a shot at Machado. Now he hops out of there pretty good. The veteran catcher, obviously, pretty smart. Sees a foul but tries to get the call with Machado right in front of him. Loves it. Pretty tough play to glove it with a catcher's mitt. AJ was a good pickup for the Rangers, the veteran catcher, obviously handling very young pitching staff and doing a good job of it. 
Nicole McFadden is back. Heads groundskeeper here at Camden Yards. I'm sure she was really happy to be taking a look at that beautiful grass and how, <laughs> how perfectly cut it is. One ball, one strike. Fouled off, and the count goes to one and two. Two away. Matt Wieters with the bases loaded here, trying to extend the Orioles' lead. Three runs in here in the inning. And a long one for Holland. Scott Feldman, the Orioles starter, enjoying it with a long rest. One two delivery. And the battle goes on. Matt Wieters falling off some tough sliders down and into him. Keep this bat alive. Waiting on a mistake. House making some noise here at Camden Yards. Real good crowd on him for the opener here on this Monday night. And a hit right here could really open this ball game up for the Orioles. Outfield swung around to right a little. One two delivery and he gets it. So Holland will get the strikeout. That is his fifth. The Orioles bat around. They come away with three runs though, and Feldman will go out with a one run lead. Member of the family, Nicole McFadden, right there, who is the head's groundskeeper, and back for her first official day back at the ballpark today. Her husband is Dan, the uh, baby boy. She we was talking with her before the game today, as all parents will realize, first day really away <laughs> from the baby. And she was saying how tough right. it was. Oh, definitely. It was great to have Nicole back. And for Felvin, there are the numbers so far. Well, he's done a nice job. He really has uh, kept mi he's mixing up his pitches well kind of struggled through that fourth inning, but it's been able to consistently keep this Rangers offense off balance. He's had some early ground balls. So he's got to get back into that two seamer. Keep it down in the zone. And the pitch will be taken outside for a ball. Here is Beltre. Angel Beltre, who grounded out his first time up, eight, nine, and one in the order for Texas. With the pitch taken for a strike on the inside corner by Felvin. Youngster with just 11 at bats and a shattered bat on that one. Manny Machado's got it and will throw him out. Tomorrow, start your night of Baltimore baseball with the Mid Atlantic Sports Report, 5 to 6 30. Keith Mills, Dave Johnson, Mel Anton, and Phil Wood. They'll have all the Orioles news and notes, and the guys will break down Scott Feldman's second start as an Oriole in his first year at home. All that and more in the Mid Atlantic Sports Report tomorrow, 5 to 6 30. One down here in the top of the fifth inning. 
Martin coming up. Leonis Martin and the breaking ball is in there for a strike. Martin's first appearance against the Orioles. And Feldman's pitch away, one ball, one strike. Ron Washington has lost his DH. Lance Berkman, left hip problem, right handed pitcher. Nick Tepsich, right elbow inflammation. He was supposed to pitch against the Orioles in the game three. Washington has not announced who will start. Joaquin Soria was reinstated from the 60 day DL yesterday, as was the right handed Corey Burns brought up from Triple A Round Rock. And that one lashed foul down the right field line. So Berkman, uh, their regular DH, they'll just substitute folks for the moment anyway in that DH role. Cruz is in it for this ball game tonight. Bench a little short. Nine pitchers in the bullpen. 2 2 delivery off the end of the bat and foul. And Feldman holds the count of two balls and two strikes. Well, Feldman doing a good job. He really isn't falling into any type of pattern right now. Every pitch seems to be different. Mixing in his curveball, his cutter. Good two seamer working right now. And another one just lashed foul and broke the bat. So Feldman working him in and out here. And the uh, count remains at two balls and two strikes. One of the reasons the Orioles were so interested in getting Feldman was the the hope for depth into ball games that he could go as a starter. He just has, has the experience to be able to work his way through games. Even if not dominating necessarily. Eat up some innings. I think yeah. that's the biggest key. To keep you in the ball game. Sure. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way. Martin will file that one back. So making them work here on this at bat. Twenty five year old got in twenty four games at Texas last year and eight the year before. It's only his third pro season. Swung on and missed. Feldman wins the battle, gets his second strikeout, two down. A really good curveball right there. Let's take a look at the Verizon Fios Exmo. Good breaking ball, really changes gears well on it. Throws it away after he yanked a couple foul. Try that back door piece and it worked. So two away. Retired the side in order in the first inning. Now trying to do it again here in the fifth. Ian Kensler, an RBI base hit. Kensler, Moreland have picked up the RBIs for Texas for the Orioles. Brian Roberts got one, one scored on an error, and Manny Machado got the other. 1 0 delivery. Kensler will take it down low for a ball. Outfield straight away on Kensler. 2 0 delivery to him down to third. Manny Machado on the big hop. Oh, yeah. And got it. Good inning, Feldman. After the team got three runs for him in the fourth, he comes out and has a one, two, three inning in the fifth. The Orioles up by one.
The sitting only tonight's Maryland Lottery hit it big contestant of the game will get $500 for any Orioles home run. Claude Swanson, you've already won $1,300 tonight. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit it big contestant of the game, play five card cash, go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter. Claude, good luck. Thinking ahead. That's way ahead. <laughs> yeah, it is. After the World Series. Here is J.J. Hardy. Great inning right there by Feldman. Quick one after the Orioles scored three in the fourth. And now get this offense back at it. Keep hauling on the ropes. Hardy started the three-run, three-hit inning with a walk in the fourth. Holland has surrendered two walks, struck out five. Feldman, no walks, has struck out two. And Hardy takes it a one ball, one strike count. Orioles have the one run lead, even though they're just one for 11 with runners in scoring position. The other side of that is they've had a lot of chances. And that is taken for a strike from Holland. Holland against the Orioles, a 3 1 lifetime record. This is his sixth game. Five of those as a starter. Pitch taken up high. He worked in that wild card game last year as a reliever. Just a third of an inning. Gave up a hit. And that'll be down to third and foul. Two ball, two strike count on Hardy. Two two delivery to him hauling the left hander a bender that's going to miss inside. So Hardy works the count three balls two strikes. You can see how Holland works his way around the plate. Oh he does. I mean he works the back door and he can get hard in on lefties. On the righties. That slider he can bust in there. We talked about that angle he creates. And J.J. Hardy he loves the inside pitch. He got to him a little bit earlier but. Holland makes it tough. Hardy battling here. A 3 2 delivery on the way, and that's going to be fouled back again. So, J.J. Hardy making him work here, and you love that, especially for a leadoff batter in an inning. Yeah, he really had a tough inning yeah. that, that last inning. So. Like I said, it was great that Feldman went out and had a quick one, one, two, three inning, get this offense back out there. And J.J. Hardy starting off this inning, really making him work. Outfield shaded around to right on him. Here's the three, two again. That's where he hits it. Martin is there, and he's got it. And uh, Hardy. He is retired one away bottom of the fifth inning Sunday the first 20,000 fans 15 and over will get the Orioles replica batting practice hat presented by Dapp and all kids 14 and under will have the great chance to make a dream come true and run the bases here at Oriole Park after the Jays game at 135 get your tickets in advance and save a day day date for a bird or go to Orioles.com just come as you are which is what that young fan did. Apple Marks would be proud. Pitch is taken up high by Nate McClouth. McClouth a double, a run scored, and a sacrifice. One unearned run in that fourth inning for the Orioles, where they got three with the error committed by Moreland. Rangers have now surrendered 30 unearned runs this season. The Orioles 18. And uh, Holland, Holland rather, a bit, bit victimized in the inning, but. Had his problems trying to work his way out of jams. Here's the 1 1 delivery, and McCloud will take it outside. You talk about those errors and the uh, unearned runs. The Orioles have been so good at not giving teams extra opportunities. Really been one of the keys to them having success the way they have this year. That'll go to center. Misjudged and caught. Beltre prefers that. 
on all defensive plays he either be on top of somebody else or lying on the field. <laughs> well he had a bad read on this ball from Nate McLeod but made a great adjustment to come up with that out. Pretty good diving effort right there. Good focus. Obviously they didn't need to make that play that spectacular but uh, was able to make the adjustment. Brian Roberts two down and nobody on. Roberts. RBI reached on an error. Beltre. On two legs. Puts it away. And a one two three inning by Holland. The Orioles are on top here by a score of three to two. Previously, as the fans come in to see Texas taking on the Orioles, Scott Feldman, second game of the Orioles, a little help, a lot of help. In fact, Matt Wieters on a great play. Then a double play, Davis at first base with a D, Holland running into trouble in the fourth inning. The Orioles battered around. Machado got the go-ahead RBI, and Holland came out of the inning down 3-2, and that's where we are right now as Scott Feldman. He'll take the Orioles into the sixth inning. Yeah, he's done a nice job once again getting deep into a ball game and really been able to mix it up well settled in that last inning after the big three run outburst by the Orioles. He's looking to continue to keep this Texas Rangers lineup off balance by mixing up his pitches. Orioles trying to continue their home streak. They've won four in a row at home coming into the ball game. David Murphy. Cruz and then Beltre do up. And Murphy will take it for a strike. He has grounded out, flied out, 0 for 4 in the times he has faced Scott Feldman. 0 1 delivery. Feldman will miss with it down low. These ball games on the road trip and now in uh, this one so far all have looked the same. Very tight, good pitching. That ball in the air to center. Jones started back, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. Adam did not get a read. Might not have mattered anyway, but it's a base hit for Murphy, a leadoff single here in the sixth inning. Now, really just perfectly placed. Now take a look. I mean, J.J. Hardy got a great jump back. Adam Jones, he realized early that he had no chance on it. I mean, right in no man's land there. So the leadoff man on with a single, and that'll bring up Nelson Cruz. Lone extra base hit for Texas in the ball game has been the double by Beltre, and he's waiting on deck. Cruz with a four-game hit streak extended with his base hit, and will take the pitch inside for a ball. Cruz has put up the third most RBIs in road games in the American League. A good run producer on the road for this Texas team. They're 24 and 18 on the road. Pitches outside, and the count goes to 2 and 0. 
Take a look at Nelson Cruz this season with no outs, just 188, with one out, 270. It's climbing, 550 slugging percentage with two outs, 353, a 714 slugging percentage. That's highest in the American League. 2-0 delivery toy puts that one to the gap. Left center, Jones coming, 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 diving! Adam Jones makes the catch! And saves probably an extra base hit. And Cruz is retired for the first out of the inning. A beautiful play by Adam Jones. He got a great jump on this ball. Cruz didn't really drive it. Look at Adam Jones, though. Great first step. He gets a bead early. He commits to it. He wants this ball. And look at the great effort. Has to turn his glove over to the backhand side. What a great play by Adam Jones. Feldman appreciates that one. Cruz tried to argue that he had trapped it as he went by Bill Welke, the second base umpire. But you saw he did not. He had it in the glove and squeezed it shut. Another big defensive play for the Orioles. Here's Beltre, a double, been hit by a pitch. And that'll be outside for a ball. Another look here at this play from Adam Jones. See him go backhand. As that ball goes in, he turns it over to contain the ball. He realizes he's got to get up, maybe throw somebody out. Outstanding play. Beltre with the runner at first, Murphy, and one down. 1 0 delivery to him, and that'll be foul back. I'll tell you the big cut. You saw how much Feldman appreciated that play from Adam Jones. Well, he's going to see a lot more of that. This is the best defense going right now. A lot of players making super plays. And look at this swing from Beltre. Hmm. Boy, that was so big. He just gave up on his bat. He <laughs> couldn't even control it. One ball, one strike count on him. Long hold. And the pitch will be inside. Beltre came into the ballgame hitting 478 in July. Beltre with the third highest average in the month, and his four home runs in July are most in the American League for the month. Two and one. Runner not going. Pitch will be taken outside. Three ball, one strike count. It's got to be a bit of a problem for Scott Feldman when one of the things on his mind, because it's not natural yet, is about holding the runner, speeding up his delivery to the plate. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's going to be a work in progress for sure. I, I, I don't think it's something you need to work on during the course of a ball game. You need to concentrate on throwing strikes. And don't be distracted. Let Matt Wieters, we saw his arm. Look at this. McClough gets up and somehow is able to get it. Both ends of that play fell down. Beltre took a swing and swung so hard, he ended up on his knee, and McClough trying to get in fell down. Yeah, take a look at Beltre here now. He's known to go down on that back knee. He does it there, but Nate McClough, he thinks he's going to dive. Puts the brakes on. He ends up on the back side. Nice recovery, though, to keep that ball from going to the wall. This is like the New York City Ballet here tonight. <laughs> Players all over the place in getting this uh, things done and accomplished. So both of them down on that one. Beltre smiling. The cloud not. He'd like to have been able to stay up and maybe come in a little further. Runners on at first and second base. Beltre's two for two now. And one away for A.J. Pierzynski. And he lashes it the other way. It is a fair ball. Going into the corner, Murphy will score. Beltre is going to be held up, not running particularly well. Beltre, and he goes back to the bag. It'll be a double for Pierzynski, a run in, and it ties the ball game up at three. A.J. Pruszynski's 12th double of the season, and you are right. He just slashes this one. That's a good two-seamer down and away. He gets the bat head on it. He gets down in the corner, and it kind of has some funky spin to it. Nate McLeod bobbles it just a touch. But Beltre stays at third. You see Pruszynski appreciating the fact that he could drive in a run and get in a double. And now the intentional pass will be given to Moreland, the left-handed batter with Elvis Andrus. Waiting on deck, the Oriole bullpen up for the first time. Troy Patton. This will be the first walk 
Feldman has surrendered it will load the bases. Krasinski has always been a tough hitter against the Orioles. He came in with a 330 batting average against the O's in his career. And even though he's not been hitting particularly well of late here at Camden Yards, it's the second best average in any park for him at 345. Eric Adair is on his way out to the mound with the sacks full, a run in, and Andrus coming up. Well, Rick Adair uh, probably going over a little bit of a scouting report here. Just reminding him, Andrus probably aggressive on first pitch, so be careful with your pitch selection. They would love to get a two seam ground ball out of Feldman to get out of this inning. Both teams getting their share of base runners on in the ball game. The Orioles left the bases loaded in that fourth inning when they picked up the three runs. They have left eight overall. Now you got Beltre, Pierzynski, Moreland on. Andrus. First ball, base hit into left field. Beltre will score. Pierzynski will stop at third base. And the Rangers go on top four to three. So after the intentional pass, one pitch thrown to Andrus for the RBI and the Ranger lead. Well, sure enough, Andrus jumping on the first pitch. This breaking ball backs up and stays with inner third. And Andrews hammers it through the 5 6 hole to score Beltre easily. So the team that had not been hitting through the first half of this game is. They pick up four runs on nine hits so far. Beltre scoring what is now, at least for the moment, the go ahead run. And Buck Showalter's on the phone with the bullpen. Patton has got to be ready. He's been up three hitters. And that will be it. So Mike Showalter on his way out as Feldman against his former team. The Rangers will leave down by a run. Just could not keep it going here in the sixth inning. Recording only one out in the inning in his debut here at Camden Yards. So with a sax full, Angel Beltre is coming up, the left hander coming on. Head and shoulders in this ball game for the Orioles. Scott Feldman got a couple of strikeouts. One of those coming against Moreland in the second inning, and he got Martin in the fifth inning. On the other side, Holland some nasty pitches. Weeders has gone down three times to Holland. Davis striking out a couple of times. And Holland suddenly finds himself in the dugout with a lead while Scott Feldman in the dugout trailing by a run. Yeah, Feldman uh, five and a third innings. He did give up the nine hits, four runs, all of them earned. Had some good defense behind him, but just unable to stay in this ball game. A couple strikeouts. 
87 pitches, and this Rangers offense will really put some pressure on him and gives way to Troy Patton. This will be his 35th game. 3.65 earned run average, 25 punch outs, 13 base on balls. And here's Angel Beltre. This is his first at bat against the left hander. Recently called up from Triple A to play, so not a lot of at bats for Beltre. Angel Beltre, the seventh game that he's played in this year. Beltre with an 0 for 2. He's grounded out twice. Bases loaded, one out. Beltre swings through it. Look at, look at Troy Patton, inherited runner, stranded 12 of 14, 86%. Nice job for Troy Patton. And he had a little bump in the road, uh, lost command, a little bit of a slider, but he has made the adjustments and he has been very effective as of late for the Orioles. 0 2 delivery, and the ball is looped in the air. Marqueca is coming, and it's going to fall in. A base hit. Pierzynski will score, and it's station to station. Texas baseball. Three runs in in the inning, and Belfry delivers the RBI and leaves the bases loaded and puts the Rangers up by two. Wow, not a bad pitch at all from Troy Patton. It's just. A little bit of luck involved there right off the end of the bat. You see this slider. It's working its way on that outside corner. Matt Wieters was going to catch that one down and away. But Del Beltre just enough out in front. Catches it on the end of the bat to find that hole. And you see him going station to station with the run scored. It's five hits in the inning. Still one away. Martin off the fist fouls it off the other way. Martinez hit 235 off left handers, well below the 314 off righties. So Patton's on here to try and get these left handers at the bottom of the order out, Beltre and Martin, but only one away. Looking for the ground ball. Upfield moves in a couple of steps on the number nine hitter, their right fielder. And the pitch will be outside by Patton. One ball, one strike. And Troy Patton has that kind of crossfire delivery as well. Very tough on lefties as he works that fastball away or in, and then the sweeping slider can be real tough. Infield, a double play depth. 1 1 delivery to him and a chopper to first base. Davis going to come home. There's one. Good play. Davis gets the out at the plate on Moreland. Two down. Nice heads up play by Chris Davis. Good backhand stop. But even better play by Troy Patton. You watch Troy Patton diving out of the way. Good play. Nice stretch by Matt Wieters. Cut down a big run there. Boy, talk about going one base at a time here in this ball game. Fielder's choice. Good play, Davis. So now two down. Bases remain loaded. And here's Kinsler. So Texas has batted around. This is their ninth batter up in the inning as the Orioles did in the fourth. When they sent nine to the plate, Kinsler, sacks full, two away, 280 off lefties. And he will take the pitch, and it is in there for a strike. Ian Kinsler, another hitter, has done well in this ballpark. Came in with a 315 average and five home runs here at Camden Yards for him. 0 1 the count. And a chopper foul. Seen a lot of those this year at home plate that have stayed fair. I don't know why this year. Balls that are just kind of bounced on. The hitters think a foul end up being just outside the batter's box in front of home plate. They're fair balls, and if you don't take off on those, can look a little ugly. Right. Andrus, Beltre, Martin, the base runners. Ball is fouled out. Pierzynski, Andrus, Angel Beltre have picked up the RBIs in the inning. Only one extra base hit. The Pierzynski double that scored a run. There he is on the right. O2 count. Kinsler waiting on it. It's outside. Yeah. 
Patton with a 1 2 delivery, and that's going to be down low. Weeders stops it, takes a look down to third. Andrus back to the bag. And Patton goes 2 and 2. Well, Troy Patton got to come up with a big pitch. That's a very tough hitter in Kinsler. Two two delivery to him and he rips the ball in the air to left field at his way back McLeod going it'll take a hop off the wall two runs have scored Martinez going to try and score relay throw Hardy not in time bases loaded double and Kensler gets back into the bag and Ian Kensler opens it up with three RBIs and an eight three lead for Texas. Troy Patton couldn't quite come up with the perfect pitch. The slider stays up and out over the plate. And Kinsler with the good patience waiting on it. He just drives this pitch out over the head of Nate McLeod. One hop off the wall. And all three runs. Chugging around the bag. Matt Weeders trying to backdoor Kinsler. Well, he gets back in there safely. What a big hit for Ian Kinsler in this offense, which we've told you was. Struggling has come alive here in this first game. Gossman up in the bullpen. Eight runs on 11 hits for Texas. And David Murphy started this out with a base hit, and here he is at the plate again. He is one for three in the ball game. Seven runs are going to be charged to Feldman. One ball, one strike count. And the pitch is outside for a ball. Two ball, one strike count. There is the starter, Scott Feldman. And that'll be foul back. These Rangers have had 10 or more runs in six of the last 12 games against the Orioles coming into this ballgame. That's how hard they have hit O's pitching over the last couple of years. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that'll be taken outside. 3 2. Yeah, they have certainly given them fits over the last couple of years. Trying to contain the offense, and even with the struggling offense coming into today, they've exploded once again on the Orioles with 11 hits at this point. 3 2 delivery on the way, and a ground ball to second base. Casilla will make the play, and that will retire the side. But a big uh, six run, six inning, and an 8 3 lead for the Rangers.
Coming over from Texas, he knows what this Texas offense has. Got the start here for the Orioles, the second start he's made. And this Texas team, unfortunately for the Orioles at this point, has found a way to get some hits. They did find a way off Feldman. And Feldman had faced him once earlier this season and had seven strong innings that gave up just two hits. But they found, they saw Feldman, and they really exploded out there. They were able to get to him, put some pressure on, and then Troy Patton really couldn't hold it in that last inning. And they were able to really explode for some runs. So the Orioles will have to battle back. They have done a lot of that this season. They are among the top five in comeback wins, and uh, Orioles noted for getting late inning runs, so we'll see if they can do it here. That's right. They've had Holland on the ropes this whole game, and they're in hopes to knock him out and try to score some late inning runs once again. That runner in scoring position number begins to really jump up and uh, be of notice. That ball in the air to center field hit hard by Casilla, but right there is Beltre, and he's got it. Casilla's retired. Four consecutive fly ball outs. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers Orioles baseball, live audio pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat 31826 and go to Orioles.com for details. Nick Marcakis, top of the order, has picked up a base hit. He is one for three in the ball game. And the pitch will be taken. 92 pitches thrown, 94 pitches thrown by Derek Holland in the ball game. Gets the call, strike one and one. Holland has not had a clean inning. Well, he had one clean inning, that last inning in the fifth, on all the fly balls. He has been the fly ball pitcher predominantly this year. Gets a ground ball here to second base. Kinsler the play. And two away here in the sixth inning. The Orioles will get Tommy Hunter up. That's what Showalter has done in managing the bullpen, trying not to overload innings in any one game on any particular member of the bullpen. Well, Tommy's had a few days off. He needs to get some work to stay fresh. Here's Manny Machado. And Manny will take it away. Manny with a three for three ball game and an RBI. Three singles in the game. Came in 0 for 3 against Holland and has matched that with hits. 1 0 delivery to him and an outside corner strike. Machado gets his 11th three hit ball game. He's had uh, a couple of four hit games as well. 1 1 delivery bounced on Pierzynski. 2 and 1. And predominantly fly balls in this one. Two ball, one strike delivery. The other way foul. Orioles have just about evened it up on the runs at home and runs on the road. They're averaging here at home about 4.7, 4.8 on the road. ERA has been a little bit higher on the road, about a half a run. 4.19 here at home for an ERA. 2 2 delivery on the way. Got jammed, third base. Beltre in front of it. And uh, Holland mows him down. Has a 1 2 3 inning and has retired the side in order the last two.
highlights tonight. Brian Roberts with a number off the end. Causes an error. Two run score. That's in the fourth inning. J.J. Hardy and Nate McLeod. Manny Machado comes up with a big RBI in the fourth inning, scoring Brian Roberts. A.J. Przinski, though, he hits a double down the line, and he plates Murphy. Troy Patton, the Kinsler, base is loaded, and he drives a double off the wall, scoring all three, and that was in the sixth, a big inning. Rangers have the lead, eight to three. Manny Machado, three for four with the three singles and an RBI. They're calling, finding a way. Six innings pitched, eight hits, three runs, a couple earned, five strikeouts. Look at the runners in scoring position. Certainly the difference in this game. There have been runners all over the place. Six for 10 for Texas, just one for 11 for the O's. Tommy Hunter now in the ball game. This will be his 35th game. 2.09 earned run average. 38 punch outs. Look at that opponent batting average at 182. Righties just 110. So Tommy Hunter going to get all the people involved in the Texas deal involved in this game. And, uh, Davis. Tommy Hunter. Feldman who came over. Separate deal from the Cubs that had been with Texas as we told you. So Hunter will try and hold them where they are as we go to the seventh inning. Nelson Cruz at the plate with the one for three in the ball game, a run scored fourth inning. Hunter with a 1 1 delivery to him. Kinsler's picked up four RBIs in this game. The bases loaded double, and the RBI he picked up in the third inning on a base hit. A big game for Ian Kensler at the top of the order. 2 1 delivery and a check swing. He didn't go around on it, somehow didn't hit it either. And it goes to 3 and 1. And 97 miles an hour leaked back over that inner third. He did check his swing. It was almost a strike to be called. If Matt Weeders catches it cleanly, it might have been a strike. 3 1 delivery and he walks him. So Tommy Hunter surrenders the. First unintentional walk. Cruz is on, leading off the seventh. On Saturday, the Orioles host the Blue Jays for a special 405 showdown. The first 20,000 fans, 15 and over, will get the Adam Jones replica road jersey. Thank you, birds. Don't miss this special promotion. It'll be a fan favorite and a perfect addition to your Birdland wardrobe. Get your tickets in advance, 888-848-BIRD. Go to Orioles.com. Silo shot coming back near the screen and behind it. Just out of reach. It hit so high though it had a chance to get back on the playing field. Beltre with that 312 number. Runner on at first base with nobody out. Texas trying to add to their lead here in the seventh inning. And that pitch will miss. One ball, one strike out. Cruz edging off first base. Beltre's 18 home runs, putting 10th starting the day. And home runs in the league. And that's going to miss down low. Mainstay for this ball club. Seventh in hits starting the day, and he's added two more to that. And a 10 game hit streak. Ron Washington has one of those Mr. Reliables in the lineup for him in Beltre. Chopper down to third. Machado short hops another one. There's one relay to say. Another double play, another highlight. Oh, every night, every night something special. Casillas had some beautiful double play turns in this ball game, but look at how aggressive Manny is, and that arm is something special. Snap throw to Casilla, nice finish on the end there. Beautiful turn. So the two have worked well in third and second in this ball game. Machado and Casilla, and there are two down. Two away seventh inning. Pierzynski RBI double hit by a pitch and is hit into a double play. Comes up with nobody on. And will take the pitch up high for a ball. 
Kaczynski veteran catcher Texas was looking for as they have been annually in the run for the postseason in that West and it looks like it's going to be another dogfight this year for them too as the Oakland team ahead of them by a half game Oakland's won 52 games Ron Washington's ball club with 51 they've gone uh, 25 and 13 against the West and that pitch is one and two. Well, they were, weren't really that aggressive in the offseason. Of course, AJ, their biggest pickup, and they needed a veteran catcher to handle this young staff, and he certainly made a difference. Yeah. One, two delivery to him. Brzezinski will follow back. As one of the more unusual stances in Major League Baseball today, with that seemingly getting two eyes on the pitcher by the way he opens himself up, you don't see many hitters who do that. See how his head looking right straight out. One two delivery and there's the chopper down to first base. Davis has got it. He'll go to the bag himself. And that will do it. So only three up in the inning. Here at Camden Yard. Seventh inning stretch time. First to four against Texas. The Rangers have taken an 8-3 lead in the ballgame. Tomorrow for game two of this four game set as Zach Britton will take them out against Martin Perez. Our coverage on Masson HD 630 O's extra presented by Geico, followed by our game coverage at seven. All the access you need right here on Masson. Take a look at tomorrow's starters. Martin Perez, two and one with a 1.85. He's just 22 years old and he has a power arm. Zach Britton has pitched very well for the Orioles. As of late, two and two with a 4.03, 12 strikeouts, 12 base on balls. But since his recall, he has been solid and really starting to establish himself in this rotation. There is Zach Britton for the Orioles, getting a look at this Texas lineup in game number one. And so far, they've produced, and Holland has just found a way to meander his way through this game. He has. The Orioles had him on the ropes uh, through the first four innings, but he's settled in. Fifth and sixth, been on cruise control. Eight, eleven, and one for the Rangers. Three, eight, and zero oh for the Orioles. Eight left by the O's. Three by the Rangers. Bottom of the seventh. Jones, two singles, two for three, and he has popped out. Adam on a vicious breaking ball over the top of it. 0 and two. Yeah, Holland will mix in an occasional curve and change. That was his big curve ball. Bounces it out in front of the plate. Adam Jones giving chase. Holland does not hurt that road ERA we talked about at 295, fifth lowest in the American League. One of the runs is unearned. So only two earned runs against him so far. 0 2 delivery, and that'll be foul back. Tries to get the hitters off pace. He comes in with that off speed stuff and then tries to rear back and bring a good fastball and then back to the off speed stuff. Yeah, good mix. 
And like you had said earlier, when he changes speeds well, that fastball looks like it's coming in about 100 plus. And he has great location with it, not afraid to get it in on righties. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way, and that'll be bounced. And a one ball, two strike count on Jones. Left handers one two delivery and Adam after a pitch inside he got away he didn't hit it. Brzezinski can't find the handle. And Adam will reach leading off the seventh inning on a strikeout. He may have had him if he would have come up with that one clean. What a hard slider in Adam Jones swing right over the top of it. Take a look at the pitch here from Holland. AJ wanted that one down and in. And Adam hesitated for a second, bare hand glove, and just cannot come up with it. That's a good break for the Orioles. It's a pass ball, as you saw, the ball was there. <laughs> Looked very catchable. And somehow just went by Przinski. And Davis with the off speed delivery to him. Chris has drawn a walk and has struck out twice. Lead off man on for the Orioles in the seventh inning. Holland with the 0 1 pitch to him and will just miss away. One ball, one strike. Chris Davis with the 267 off lefties coming into the ball game. Facing uh, Holland for the first time. Jones on at first. No chances here with the. Five run differential. Foul back in a one two count. Chris unhappy with not catching up to that one. There's one of the possible starters mentioned for game three. Wolf is up in the bullpen, however, right now. Yeah, if he throws tonight. Ryan Mattis ready for the Orioles. Wolf throws tonight, he won't be starting. Josh Lindblom was the other who'd been talked about to make the start. Washington in much the same situation the Orioles are in so often but Showalter not knowing who's going to start games until you figure out what happens in the bullpen a couple of games before. Well they have some bullpen depth out there you'd mentioned nine relievers in the Rangers bullpen. And Davis again on the big cut on the off speed pitch three strikeouts. One away. Take some off on this slider, 83 miles an hour, and Chris Davis out in front. He wants this one bad, but a little over aggressive. Holland gets him on the K. Ten strikeouts is Derek Holland's high this season. Eleven is his career high. He's got seven in the ball game, or eight. Get the one against Jones, although Jones reads base. Right. Matt Wieters, 1 0 count. 110 pitches thrown by Holland in the ball game. Wieters has struck out all three times up. 1 0 delivery. Wants to avoid the golden sombrero. More important to get a base hit here and get somebody on for the Orioles. And try to get something going. We talked time and time again about this Orioles offense. You get one or two guys on, everybody in this Orioles offense has the ability to hit a home run and then get right back in this game in a hurry. 2 0 delivery in the air to right field. Got a lot of that one. Going back, Martin looking. Goodbye, home run. Mad Waiters delivers the two RBI shot, his 12th of the year. RBIs 43 and 44. And makes it an 8 5 game. Matt Waiters showing some great opposite field power. Holland falls behind. This is a fastball on the outer third. 
And he gets full extension and just hammers this ball. To the right center gap. Big home run for Matt Wieters and the Orioles right back in it. Orioles take advantage of that pass ball and the Jones strikeout as he scores ahead of Wieters. That's going to be a base hit into right field for Hardy. So Hardy is on. That's his second hit and the third time on in the ball game. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. A.J. Hardy a two hit ball game and the Orioles here in the seventh inning. Work their way right back into the ball game. That's only the second home run by a left hander off Holland this year. Left handers have hit him much better, 297 to 246, but the home runs, six of the eight, have been hit by right handers. Nate McLeod up, McLeod with a double, a sacrifice, and he has flied out. And McLeod will take the pitch down low for a ball. And Nate McLeod. had a big double, actually just missed a home run if it had gotten elevated a little bit. That would have been a home run for Nate McLeod. So he's seeing Holland pretty well. 1 0 delivery to him. That'll be inside. And Holland may well be running out of gas here in the seventh inning with 116 pitches having been thrown in the ball game. McLeod goes to left field. All right, Ed Murphy. Two down. It's a tough call for a manager. You want your horse out there, and obviously, you know, throwing over 100 pitches is okay with some, but you have to look back on the innings, and he had some really tough innings that he had to fight through. Actually, the first four, he was really, Soriel's offense put some pressure on him. I'm uh, pretty impressed. 117 pitches to this point. Ron Washington letting him go. Trying to let him get through this inning and get this out as Brian Roberts is up with a runner on at first base and two down. Roberts credited with uh, an RBI came in that fourth inning. Now with Hardy on at first base trying to keep it going. Reached on an error. Ended up at second base and would come around to score. 1 0 delivery. Pitch will be taken up high. 2 0. <laughs> Orioles have 10 hits. So here were two teams struggling offensively who so far have combined for 13 runs and 21 hits. 2 0 delivery. And in fact, that's more like. What you would expect from each of these teams offensively. Right. Maddox on the phone to their bullpen. Ready if needed. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way, and that will miss outside. And Holland really struggling now. Three ball, one strike out. And good at bat by Brian Roberts, obviously recognizing that, really being patient. Left hander 3 1 2 down. Roberts taking it's there for a strike. And he's going to try and get on with a walk. 3 2 now the runner Hardy will go. Moreland moves behind the base runner at first. <laughs> 3 2 delivery and walking. And that will be it for Holland. So a career high in pitches thrown here with 125 and just ran out of gas here in the seventh inning and the manager's always toughest decision when to make that walk and make the change and you hope you don't wait that one batter too long. All right. You got very fortunate there. So Wolf will come on to do the pitching. The Orioles are right back in it. They're going to have the potential tying run at the plate in this inning.
Holland on the bench. Orioles able to get to him and knock him out of the game. Six and two-thirds innings pitched. Ten hits, five runs, three of those earned. Seven punch outs, 125 pitches thrown. And he is responsible for the runners at first and second. Hardy and Roberts. Ross Wolf now in the ball game. This will be his 12th appearance. 1.98 earned run average has been very effective for the Rangers. Really got called up to make a spot start, but earned a job as the long relief role for the Rangers. And he looks like he's going to be a mainstay in this Rangers bullpen. He's got a fastball, split finger, and a slider. So the Orioles know he will not be starting in this series. Come out of the bullpen here, and for the O's, all of a sudden, a very big at bat. To see a do up, Ryan Flaherty will hit for him. To see a solid game at second base, he had a sacrifice. He'll come out, and the left hander Flaherty will hit against Wolf. Runners on at first and second, and two down. And a chopper on the first pitch scene to second base. Kensler's got it. And Flaherty is retired. But the Orioles come back, and on the home run by Matt Wieters, his 12th, they get a couple of RBIs and make it an 8 5 game. Here are the candidates for our ball game. Manny Machado, three for four at an RBI. Matt Wieters, the big two run a homer in that last half inning. And Adam Jones. Jones in this ball game has picked up a couple of hits and a run scored. Text in your vote A, B, or C, 31826. Now, Brian Mattis. Brian Mattis now coming into the ball game and this will be his 39th game. 3.78 earned run average, 28 strikeouts, the 10 base on balls. Good job for the Orioles out of the bullpen. Look at that opponent batting average, 217 overall. Lefty's just 134 off Brian. Righty's much better at 321. He's looking to get this Orioles offense back in the dugout. Ryan Flaherty in. Now starting at second base in place of Casilla. Went into pinch hit in the last inning. So Texas will bat with the Orioles right back involved in it as we go to the eighth inning. Mitch Moreland will be leading it off. Moreland has delivered an RBI with a base hit. And an intentional pass picked up in the game. Now at 264 on the year. Mattis, the left hander. And the pitch swung on him. Missed. Tommy Hunter came on to work uh, an inning, gave up nothing. 0 1 count. A 
Here's the 0 1 delivery. Ball put up in the air to left field. Clouth is there, plenty of time. And he's got it. Moreland retired, one down. Big night for Elvis Andrus. He's got a five game hit streak now. He's extended it with a couple of singles in the game. He has scored both times he's been on, and he picked up an RBI for that last base hit in the sixth inning. Andrus now 248. Machado even with a bag at third, and the pitch will be taken outside. Recognizing his speed, Machado will stay in on the 1 0 count. Strike on the outside corner to him. Beautiful pitch right there from Brian Mattis. Matt Wieters didn't even have to move the glove. That pitch away. Count goes to two and one. Long four game stand, uh, part of the revised scheduling for this season. It's resulted in a lot of these four game series, and they become tough. Not many secrets left when you get done playing four against the opposing team. You've seen everybody. Britton and Martin Perez tomorrow night for game two. 6 30 goes extra, 7 o'clock for the ball game. Andrus three ball one strike out. We'll put that one into the seats three and two. This is 3 2 pitch and a little loop of the right field. Flaherty over and he's got it. Ryan Flaherty with a nice defensive play. Two down. Oh, it sure was. It's a tough read off the end of the bat. I'm sure first step was back, but keeps his eye on the ball. Pretty good line right there and shows his great athleticism. He has been playing a great second base. Of course, all the second basemen that have come in and defensively have just done a marvelous job for the Orioles. Good play by Flaherty just getting into the field after coming on to pinch hit for a Casilla. And Beltre with two down. Angel Beltre, big RBI in the sixth inning. One for three in the ball game. Ryan Mattis, the 0 1 delivery to him, and that's back into the screen. Well, the pitcher is trying to regain control of this ball game after the uh, hitters went to work on it in the middle part of the game. O2 delivery. That'll be to center. Jones coming, and he gets it. And indeed, Mattis does take charge of the ball game. Retires the side in order. It remains 8 5, Texas.
Eight, uh, for Homer Bailey, last time out a no hitter, not tonight. He is still pitching. He has given up four runs on nine hits in the ball game tonight. He's not going to equal Johnny Vandermeer's back to back. But Max Scherzer still has a chance. Trying to equal Clemens 14 0 start in 86. Scherzer's in a 2 2 game against Cleveland, bottom of the seventh. He is uh, still working in that ball game. And Felix Hernandez goes against Boston tonight. Ken Felix, 18 starts, 8 4, 2 6 9 ERA, but it's not at a win since June 15. He's had no decisions in each of his last three starts. Now, Soria comes into the ball game. His first appearance yesterday, it was a scoreless, clean inning. He's been on the DL for a long time, recovering from Tommy John surgery. His last appearance back in 2011. You see zeros across the board. The Orioles would certainly like to put some numbers up there for him. So Joaquin Soria back. And a ground ball towards short off the bat of Marquecas. Andrus, a pitch and an out here in the eighth inning. For every Orioles walk this season, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to the Y of Central Maryland's Fit and Fun Program. There been 218 walks, $10,900. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Manny Machado going for a four-hit game. Three singles, an RBI, three for four in the ball game. And the pitch outside for a ball. Soria, two time All Star, 160 career saves. He was the closer for Kansas City. Then shut down for that operation, surgery, Mike was talking about. So they get him back, hoping that he is the pitcher he was before or better. Yeah, I mean, nothing uh, really overpowering from Soria, but he does have five pitches and he's able to locate very well as command of all five of his pitches and mixes it up throughout the count. Manny Machado will take the pitch away. Two ball, one strike count. Healthy Soria could really make a difference for this bullpen down the stretch. They'll get the strike called at the knees, and it goes to two and two. And a fastball down and away. Przinski brought it up about six inches. It looked like a little over aggressive on the frame, but he gets the call. Two two. Soria telegraphing the off-speed pitch right there, which didn't do anything that he wanted it to. <laughs> no. Slipped out of his hands. Twenty four thousand six hundred nineteen tonight. Twenty four six one nine here at Camden Yards. Three two delivery on the way and that'll be foul back. Line him up. Bare handed catch, second deck. Two pensive managers. In the second half of the season well underway, even though we haven't gotten to the All Star break. Three ball, two strike count. The Orioles, two and four so far in the month of July. Well, the Rangers are three and three. Told you they're coming off a homestand, one above 500, not quite where they wanted that to be. They've been a real good team on the road, that 24 and 18 mark, right up there at the top in win percentage on the road. Three ball, two strike count, Machado. And he goes. Battle one on the eighth pitch, and a strikeout for Soria. A well, real good slider right here to Manny Machado, and he really didn't make any mistakes. He was living on that outer third, and this one with great late movement at the end, and Manny can't quite get to it to keep the bat alive. Strikeout for Soria. Two away. Here's Adam Jones. Swing and a foul tip. 
I was just thinking a wolf could start, I guess. Yeah. He only worked a third of an inning, so if it was his day to throw on the right. side, he like threw on the day. side on the mound. Exactly. So he kept himself available, working just the third of an inning. Josh Lindblom or Wolf expected to be one of them, the starters in game three. Mike Maddox, pitching coach with the Rangers. Then with Ron Washington and a very successful job handling this pitching staff at Texas. 0 2 count on Jones. A couple of singles. Fouled off. He reached base. An important pass ball and a strikeout in the seventh inning to lead it off and would score ahead of Weeters on the home run. Well, that's what they're looking to do once again try to get base runners on. Buck Showalter, uh, great confidence in this Orioles offense, knowing that they have that ability to score runs late in ball games. Jones again fouls it off. Adam holds the count at 0 and 2. Reaches. Adam has had a two for six with a home run lifetime off Soria. But obviously it's been a while. So they reintroduce themselves to one another. Here's the 0-2 delivery again. And that will miss a ball and two strikes. Feeling among most in baseball is once you have that surgery, Tommy John, you can come back in a year, but you're not going to be ready really to be yourself until another year into the game. Soria will get the fly ball to left field. Murphy is there. He's got it. And Soria looks all right in that inning. He retires the side in order. We go to the ninth. Rangers on top. Baseball on Mass and is brought to you by Five Hour Energy Shots. Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick with you here for the opener of this four game set. And the Rangers have the 8 5 lead, out hitting the Orioles just 11 10, but Texas 6 for 10 with runners in scoring position and the Orioles 1 for 12. Yeah, and they make another call to the bullpen. TJ McFarland coming in, 4.30 earned run average, opponent average. At 270, lefties 260, and the righties at 277. Uh, and this is kind of rare to see TJ coming in in this situation. He's usually a long man for the Orioles and Buck Showalter. Looking to use that left handed arm to get this Orioles offense back in there for the ninth inning.
Orioles had trailed by as many as five before Weeders got that home run in the seventh inning. Leonis Martin up, and the pitch to him's inside from McFarland. Reached on a fielder's choice, scored in the sixth inning. He's taking the 0 for 3 at the plate. Kensler, a four RBI ball game. Moreland has picked up an RBI. Anderson, RBI. And that'll go to first base. Davis will play it himself. One down in the ninth. Let's update you on the voting for the AT&T player of the game. Manny Machado on top so far. Still, chance for your voice to be heard. A, B, or C, 31826. The results coming up on the O's Extra Post Game Show. Manny with a three-hit ball game and an RBI. And once again, flashing the leather. A couple of outstanding plays. Here's Ian Kensler. And Kensler will take a strike on the outside corner. Kensler has started this series out with exactly what Texas needed, and that's a big offensive night for him. He now has a 13 game hit streak against the Orioles going. Has hit in seven straight in this ballpark. 0 oh, 2 count. And Kensler will take it down low. One and two on Ian Kensler, their second baseman, with Murphy waiting on deck. That'll go to second base. Flaherty is there. And we'll record the out. So a couple of ground ball outs here in the ninth inning. Closer is Nathan. Corey Burns, who came up to the ball club yesterday from Triple A, also in the bullpen. Supposedly, if it remains three runs, Nathan's on. If it's more than that, Burns would come on. Yeah. Here's David Murphy. Two down bases are empty. And McFarland's delivery is fought off. Murphy, a single run scored sixth inning. He's one for four. One delivery by McFarland to him. Move the ball outside, missed with it. One ball, one strike. One one delivery. And put in the air. Center field. Jones deep. Not going to get to it. Ball will take a hop off the wall. Murphy on his way to second base. He'll go in with a two-out double here in the ninth inning and his second hit of the ball game, two for five. Not too often you can beat Adam Jones deep, but Murphy got on that hanging breaking ball and back spun it out there. And he got out there in a hurry. This becomes a big at bat here in the ninth inning for Cruz. Chance to put another run on the board if he can get a base hit. He has singled and scored that came in the fourth inning. Runner at second, two down. And Cruz takes the pitch up high for a ball. Twelve hits now for the Rangers. One oh delivered. That's going to be down low, two and oh. Cruz with an at bat that may decide who's going to come on to pitch in the bottom of the ninth inning. 2 0 delivery to him. Ground ball to second base. Flaherty is there. And that will do it. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Orioles bat, bottom of the ninth inning. Davis, Weeders, schedule up along with Hardy.
Whatever that may look like coming up here, and we'll see as the Orioles get some big bats up in the bottom of the ninth inning, down by three. Yeah, Joe Nathan, the Rangers closer, having an exceptional year. 20 saves on the year, 40 strikeouts, 10 base on balls. Look at that earned run average at 1.40, and he has been dominant. Opponent batting average at 153, lefties 162, and righties only 143. He's going to be tested here, though, with some Orioles thump coming up. Chris Davis, Weeders, and Hardy. For Joe Nathan against the Orioles in his career, he has a 2 0 record, is 10 and 10, 10 4 10 in saves. This will be game number 20 he's appeared in against the Orioles. He's given up only uh, four runs, 10 hits, and 20 innings for an ERA of 1.80 against the Orioles. So Nathan goes to work. So do the Orioles. Chris Davis, three strikeouts and a walk in the ballgame. Davis 0 for 2 off Nathan. Shift on in the infield. And Davis will take the pitch for a strike. Soria worked an inning. Had one strikeout. Wolf a third of an inning. Starter Holland, pitcher of record, five runs, four earned, ten hits, six and two thirds. 0 1 delivery, and Davis will take it up high. One ball, one strike count from Nathan. Nathan trying to tie Jim Johnson for the lead and saves with 30. Here's the 1 1 delivery. 1 and 2. Well, that's his bread and butter right there. Slider down and in. He gets ahead. That's his plus plus pitch, his go to out pitch. He uses it, as, uses it against lefties and righties. Here's the one two delivery. Davis will take it up high. Not where Nathan wanted that one to go. Two ball, two strike count on Davis. Chris will file it off the other way. Nathan at 38 years old probably second only to Mariano in age for closers. Yeah he's been around a long time. Long time with the Minnesota Twins. Started out in the majors with the Giants. 2 2 delivered to Davis and the count is full. Three balls two strikes. A real good take right there from Chris Davis on a hard slider down and in 87 miles an hour. Three two delivery and Chris Davis strikes out for the fourth time in the ballgame. Uh, Nathan gets him on the three two one away ninth inning. My another slider here and this one looks like it's just hovering out over the plate and right at the end some late bite down and in to Chris Davis as he swings over the top of that one. That'll bring up Weeders. Matt too has had three strikeouts in the ball game, but he got his 12th home run in that seventh inning, two RBI homer off Derek Holland, and he will take that pitch. Yeah, Matt Waiters with the big two-run shot off Holland, fastball away, and he hammered that one. Get the Orioles right back in the ball game. Now trying to get a couple of base runners on here in the bottom of the ninth to get the potential tying run to the plate. And Nathan gets a strike on the outside corner. Matt Wieters an 0 for 2 off Nathan. One ball, one strike delivery. Just missed outside, trying to get Wieters to chase one. And a two ball, one strike count.
Two one delivery second for a strike. Here's the 2 2 delivery by Nathan Fowler. Pretty good pass right there from Matt Wieters. He hit a home run the opposite field. Yeah, they had a fastball. It was a good swing to do the same there. Nathan with a 2 2. Leaders will take it up high. So again, a three ball, two strike count as he did on Davis. The Orioles' four game win streak here at home at stake here in this ninth inning. Texas trying to get their 25th win on the road in this one. Here's the 3 2 delivery, and Leaders is gone. So Leaders has struck out four times. Two down, ninth inning, two Ks by Nathan. And after a steady dose of fastballs, Matt Wieters works to count to 3 2. And he throws another good slider there. Matt Wieters trying to hold up, getting a little bit fooled by that one. It's 11 strikeouts recorded in the ballgame by Holland, Will Soria, and Nathan. And J.J. Hardy. Two down, nobody on, a couple of singles, a walk, and a run scored. Barring anything else happening here in the ninth inning, the Orioles over the last seven games have gone six for 47 with runners in scoring position and have left 41 on base and a strike on the inside corner. Adding to that tonight with the one for 12 and so far 10 left on base. And they have certainly had their opportunities throughout this ball game. Just one or two hits away from really busting an open. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way is on the outside corner. Nathan with a 1-2 delivery and that'll be fouled off. Looking to pick up the win, Derek Holland, their starter, would be seven and four. Scott Feldman, the Orioles starter in the year, would go to seven and seven, 0 and one for the Orioles. And Nathan could pick up the save, which would be his 30th. Here's the one two delivery to Hardy. Ground ball toward short, not hit hard. Andrus over, got a hurry. He does. And the ball game's over. So Nathan comes on and retires the side in order. And the Rangers, whose bats come alive here in this ball game, able to pick up the 8-5 win, out hitting the Orioles by a score of 12-10, first of four. Game two coming up tomorrow. Zach Britton will take the mound against Martin Perez. Our coverage will begin at 6.30 at Masson HD with those extra presented by Geico, followed by our game action at 7. This has been a Masson presentation. Tom and Rick, those extra presented by PNC, coming right up as they look back to a middle part of the ball game where the offensive bats went to work. That'll do it for Mike Bordick and all of our crew here at Captain Yards. I'm Gary Thorne. We will see you tomorrow. Good Lord willing. Adieu.